Today, uh, welcome everybody to uh, 59th open seminar in Frontier uh, of ph nuclear physics. Uh, this seminar uh, series is uh, organized by the Institute of Mountain Physics, uh, the key laboratory of nuclear physics and the uh, NBEAM application at Fudan University and the Shanghai Research Center and the theoretical nuclear physics. Uh, the NSFC. So uh, this uh, seminar also supported by the program of introduced talent of disciplines to the universities, uh, and also the the journal of nuclear science and technology. Uh, the uh, the the living stream will be on their coolshow dot com. So today we are very pleased to have. Uh, Professor Wolfgang uh, Trotman from the GSI Hemphors Center for the uh, Heavy Iron Research. Um, Professor Wo uh, uh, Wolfgang Trotman uh, had received his PhD uh, in physics at uh, Ludwig's uh, Maximilian University in 1976. Uh, he joined the GSI Hemphors Center in 1985. Uh, he, uh, he has worked in many uh, famous uh, universities, institutes, uh, include, uh, let's say, the University of Washington, Seattle, uh, in uh, Washington uh, State, uh, uh, the USA, the United States. Uh, and uh, some else like uh, the uh, Chalk River Nuclear Lab, uh, Ontario, Canada, and uh, also another uh, famous laboratory, the Brookhaven National Laboratory at, uh, uh, in New York, USA. So, um, so today uh, we are very pleasant to have uh, the professor uh, Trotman, his topic will be the uh, new star <laughs> radio from the laboratory experiments. So, uh, Professor, uh, so your time, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for a very nice introduction and in particular for the invitation. I'm certainly very nice that I can speak to you all, and I already saw some friends and colleagues on the list of attendants. And it's certainly my, my pleasure to, to talk to you and um, in a seminar with uh, such tradition, apparently, you, you said uh, 59th session now, so it has a long tradition and mm -hmm. I'm certainly happy to be now part, part of that seminar. So today I would like to discuss with you why laboratory experiments are so important for establishing and um, improving the nuclear equation of state, also for astrophysical applications. And I will start from this. Can you see my pointer? Yes, can very. Be seen? Yeah. Yes, okay. Can see very so yeah. I like to start from this point here, the discussion today, and this is in the visible light, the aftermath of the famous event. The Neutron star merger observed in, 19, uh, in, in 2017, 17 August 2017. And this is in a visible light, the aftermath of this event, which has started, we can say a new era in, in astronomy and ast astrophysics. I think we have all seen these pictures here, the laser interferometer here, one of the two, <clears throat> Uh, in the United States, we have seen, seen the, um, the signal itself here on the frequency versus time distribution here with frequencies. If you could put it on a speaker, we could hear the chirp here when the two neutron stars uh, collided, then the uh, gamma, ray, uh, uh, gamma ray burst seen soon afterwards. And, um, 
then it was a very favorite event because it was happened just at the end of O2 of LIGO and uh, Virgo in Italy had just come online and with this with three instruments the uh, spatial localization was good enough so that <clears throat> other instruments could then be directed in to this event and then uh, record the the um, the aftermath and the <clears throat> so it was the first um, observed neutron star merger with gravitational waves and then I started the multi-messenger astronomy because electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic radiation on of several wavelengths were recorded and over days and weeks and new information was um, obtained on nucleogenesis uh, <clears throat> and a neutron star merger was uh, identified as site of the R process uh, uh, from the absorption spectra then measured in the so-called kilonova. The information <clears throat> on the equation of state is inscribed here in the um, in spiral frequencies. The tidal deformation modulates these uh, frequencies or from that we then also then can obtain information on the nuclear equation of state. So, um, <clears throat> let's see, um, I seem to have difficulties uh, going to the next slide. I'm, I cannot go to the next slide. How is this now? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're at the night. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so much information came from this aftermath of the neutron star <clears throat> merger that the um, astrophysical journal Letters came up with a focus issue. In, in this, and there we can read that the light curves and spectra resemble predictions for a kilonova powered by radioactive decay of heavy nuclei and isotopes synthesized through the R process in the merger ejector. And actually, here we have the solar abundance, and we have in red here the R process uh, contribution to the solar abundance and and this peak here around gold nuclei for example is known to be generated by r process but up to now it was not known where this r process can possibly take place and we now know that gold is produced in mergers and of course this has to be modeled and better understood and um, for investigations of these processes that we are all after nuclear physicists and nuclear astrophysicists for understanding these processes, we need the nuclear good knowledge of the nuclear equation of state. Now, 2017 was an important year also for another reason, because NISA was launched and installed on the International Space Station. NISA is a, the neutron star interior composition explorer which uh, features here 56 instruments mounted here called concentrators for uh, X-ray observation. And its particular feature is the time resolution, 100 nanosecond time resolution, which allows <clears throat> time resolved um, to observe time resolved emissions of X-rays emitted by neutron spars by uh, so-called millisecond pulsars and um, the pulse profile modeling of the radiation um, here recorded with this instrument is makes it possible to to measure how much light is how much radiation is spent around by these uh, compact objects in the case of strong gravity for example we can see the radiation even when the cone of radiation points away from the observer and the uh, strength of this emission then contains the information on the compactness of the, op of the object, compactness meaning mass over radius. And from that then the radii can be determined. And this is what 
NISA has done in two independent analysis in Amsterdam and in Washington, then for these two stars here, um, their radii were determined. We see here a mass versus radius diagram. And um, actually here, this pulsar here, <clears throat> JO740-6620 is the heaviest neutron star known up to now with a mass of uh, 2.08 solar masses. And it's very nice that at, for exactly this star, then NISA was able to come up with this radius measurement here. Um, radius between something like, uh, say, 11.5 and 13.5 kilometers. And also for another star, which was uh, analyzed earlier with a smaller mass, 1.4, uh, solar uh, uh, solar masses, so-called typical neutron star mass. And already these two observations provide heavy constraints for the nuclear equation of state. What, what we see here, these lines are mass radius relations generated with uh, different equations of state and you can already see some are ruled out and some are favored by these measurements. Now the mass radius relation um, is equivalent to the usual um, pressure versus density um, present, uh, representation of the nuclear equation of state. And we can imagine with if we had many very precise measurements here for various masses, then we could reconstruct the um, nuclear equation of state just from these measurements. Now, this means we live really in a very interesting time now with all these new observations, uh, astrophysical observations. And uh, this was summarized um, last year when we had uh, the nuclear symmetry conference in Catania, NUSIM. 2022 in Catania, then Reed Essig gave a talk. And in his talk, he showed this slide here, summarizing what we learned from the, these recent astrophysical observations. And he started with a model agnostic prior here, the black lines here, all the possibilities that one could think of, of the pressure versus density. Um, uh, behavior of the uh, nuclear equation of state. And he showed that just from the existence of these heavy pulses of typical two solar masses here, a uh, strong constraint exists and the um, possible solutions are constrained to this narrow window here at density about six. And then gravitational wave information, the tidal deformability, puts an upper bound here of that kind. And then from NISA, the radii produce a lower bound so that we have a narrow corridor here for the pressure versus density relation. But not so much information is produced at lower densities um, from the astrophysical uh, new measurements and observations. So this is the regime of nuclear physics. And um, before we come to that, let me just make a comment. Now, model agnostic prior. This is the language of Bayesian inference. And I think you are familiar with this method here. You have a prior that contains existing knowledge, what you think you are sure you know. And then if there's a new data from an experiment or observation, then a base theorem can be applied and then one can construct the posterior, the prior informed by this new data. And this has become very popular recently because of the new computational possibilities we have these days, because it involves a lot of calculations for each of the choices here, you have to do the analysis whether it can reproduce the new data and calculate the probability that then is used to uh, construct the posterior. So 
very very demanding on computational possibilities and the prior is important. That's a message I'd like to uh, just uh, uh, mention here and we will come to this later on in this talk. And then I give you an example here, ACEOS experiment, which I will um, present to you in a minute here, performed at the uh, GSI. And from that data, the neutron star pressure at saturation density was uh, derived, and this is the value that came out from this from this experiment. And um, it's an example that nuclear reactions and nuclear structure can provide us with uh, information here in this region of lower densities. So let's come to the GSI. Um, now this is a um, a uh, few of the future here, the existing laboratory here. Some of you have uh, been there and have seen it. And this is now what we hope in a few years, what it will look like. Right now, it's, it looks like this here. One, the, the, the biggest uh, scientific construction site in Europe and um, looks kind of chaotic here. But I suggest to you that you perhaps have a look at these uh, videos, at the videos available at the GSI website. And the most recent one then shows you what has been already achieved and what is presently happening. Now, our experiment took place a few years ago here using the existing accelerators, the linear accelerator and the synchrotron here. And the beam energy was 400 MeV per nucleon gold beams colliding with uh, gold targets. And the object was to measure elliptic flows. Now, elliptic flow in heavy ion collisions is known that it can serve as a pressure gauge for nuclear matter uh, at sufficiently high energy, then the um, matter in the collision zone is compressed, and then the spectator nuclei here are in the way. And because of the compression, matter is squeezed out preferentially perpendicular to the reaction plane here, uh, uh, up and down. And then this can be measured. And here are uh, uh, examples here from the experiment of Yvonne Leifels in 93, which was the first experiment that reported the neutron squeeze out. And um, examples of azimuthal distributions near target rapidity, that means backward in the center of mass, near projectile rapidity, forward in the center of mass. We see the bounce off here, and then the squeeze out here, the double hump squeeze out um, uh, upwards and downwards then is described in, in the Fourier expansion with a second Fourier coefficient the V2, so V2 is a parameter describing the uh, in intensity of the squeeze out and contains information on the pressure versus um, density relation. Of course, we need nuclear theory to explain to us what the pressure and what the density is in these reactions and um, then can derive information from uh, describing these reactions. Now, the motivation for the experiment came from these calculations here. Uh, the UR QMD, UR quantum molecular dynamics, at that time, Jing Feng Li and co workers had <coughs> provided us with a code. And then it was shown that the QMD can describe the, full, the V2. Here is the V2 uh, parameter I just mentioned. The black uh, dots here for protons in this reaction, 400 MeV gold on gold. And QRQMD can describe well the protons in black. And it was shown that depending what one assumes for the nuclear equation of state, AC hard or AC soft, then the neutrons in red will respond differently. Here, hard, the neutrons are 
stronger, squeeze out is stronger than that of the protons and AC soft. The neutron squeeze out is similar to that of the pro, uh, protons. And this then led to the idea to measure the elliptic flow ratio. The ratio then is uh, observable that is useful in the sense that many ingredients needed to describe these uh, squeeze out phenomena then may cancel. That is the hope, was the hope. Now, before we come to the data, let me uh, briefly here remind you of what nuclear physicists uh, think and um, how nuclear physicists see the nuclear equation of state. Here now we have energy versus density for symmetric matter, for uh, pure neutron matter, highly asymmetric matter. Here is the asymmetry parameter, asymmetry one here, asymmetry zero here. And that is the saturation point that we know from studying atomic nuclei and the black square somehow uh, tells us what is the range of density and uh, asymmetries that we can study with uh, by measuring, um, by doing experiments in the laboratory with atomic nuclei. Now, neutron stars are somewhere up here, distributed over a large range of densities and um, supernova explosion, uh, explosions require information also about lower densities, very small densities and various asymmetries. So if you like to get information um, on the properties of the equation of state under these various um, density and uh, asymmetry conditions, then one first perhaps should go from here to here. And this difference is called the symmetry energy. And then to go to other densities, the first order term is the slope here. And the slope here is usually then expressed with this parameter L for historical reasons here, three times the uh, rho zero times the uh, derivative of the symmetry energy versus density. And the, <clears throat> the symmetry is the coefficient in this expression here, the expansion um, in terms of density and asymmetry and is assumed or known to be with very good approximation um, goes with the square of the asymmetry. So if we have neutron rich nuclei like uh, gold with asymmetry 0.2, then we only can go 4% up into that direction. And so it requires very precise experiments and precise theory to really ex um, extrapolate from this region into the wide region of densities and asymmetries that we like to know. The pressure that I just showed is here proportional to L because at saturation, the pressure of a uh, symmetric matter is zero. So just the, um, the L parameter divided by three gives us the pressure. So with that, let's uh, look at the experiment here. Uh, the setup used in the ACS experiment uh, operated with a land detector to measure the neutrons and protons from which then uh, uh, the uh, ratio, elliptic flow ratio then was determined. And the orientation of the reaction plane here was determined with a uh, uh, Aladdin Toth wall and with the uh, Chimera rings that had come from Catania and also with a micro ball around the target coming from uh, St. Louis in uh, <clears throat> uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And this was very important because we had a target here, but also we had several meters of air here as a much thicker target and the micro ball made sure that the reaction here signals from the micro ball told us whether the reaction has happened in the target or somewhere on the way to our trigger detector. 
just to give you an impression of the experiment, let's have a look at the uh, uh, large area neutron detector land here. It's a huge instrument, two by two by one meter, and consists of alternating sheets of iron converter and plastic scintillator sheets and has high detection efficiency, 80% for 200 MeV neutrons. And the rings of um, the uh, Chimera detector here, that is the full setup in Catania here in Sicily. And four rings here had been brought to the GSI major operation here, four double rings containing 352 modules and giving us a high azimuthal granularity. Now, let's go to the, res uh, to the results. This now is the flow ratio here, the V2 of neutrons divided by V2 of charged particles. For technical reasons, we could have to combine all charged particles here. And then it's plotted as a function of the PT, transverse momentum, and black are the data. And then purple and green here are two predictions for the soft case and for the AC stiff case. And what gamma means is shown on the right side here. We have the symmetry energy as a function of density um, plotted with this parameterization here a kinetic term and a potential term. And here this gamma parameter, that is the gamma parameter that determines here the stiffness, gamma 0.5, gamma 1.5. And as a result, we obtain gamma equals 0.72 plus minus 0.19, somewhere here, semi mildly soft density dependence of the symmetry energy. And this then, is plotted on the right panel uh, here, the symmetry energy as a function of density and the L parameter here, the slope at saturation here was uh, 72 plus minus 13 MeV. And it's compared here with the earlier results in yellow from the Fopi land experiment data of Yvonne Leifels that I showed earlier. And it's also compared with precise knowledge that we have at about two thirds of saturation. Uh, it's just a, a known fact that, um, that from uh, nuclear structure, we obtain very precise information, not at saturation, but at about two thirds saturation because atomic nuclei, um, they have surfaces. And this data here, uh, including heavy iron work from Michigan State University and isobaric analog resonances of uh, Pavel Danielevich was uh, uh, put together in this paper of uh, Chakorovitz and co-workers and compares well with what we, uh, with the parameterization used here for to describe the AOS neutron versus charged particle uh, flow ratio. Now, Clearly 34 MeV here is a parameter of the, let's go back here, is a parameter here of the interpretation. And um, we don't know the symmetry energy at saturation so well. So there is some uncertainty coming from the fact that uh, if you use a different value here, you get a different value for L. Now, very important was not only these values here for the slope, but also the density that is actually probed. And this was studied with model calculations. And we found out that the densities probed extend over a wide region up to the maximum densities in the central part of these collisions. But um, the center of these distributions is close to saturation. And had we been able to isolate protons, then we could have also probed slightly higher densities, but this was not possible in that experiment, and but is a goal for the next experiment. Now this information here, the slope, the um, dependence on S0, and the um, distribution of um, sensitive of uh, uh, densities probe, then all this information entered 
in this work here that came out last year, the um, results were were um, uh, were used by um, <clears throat> a group of uh, authors from nuclear theory, heavy ion reactions, and astrophysics to combine everything. Combine all the information we have from heavy ion experiments, from astrophysical observations, and from nuclear theory. And um, how does how did this work? The starting point was chiral EFT. Now chiral EFT is an effective theory of the QCD that describes strong, strong interactions in terms of nucleon and pion degrees of freedom using a systematic momentum uh, expansion of the nuclear forces. And we see here just um, the well-known hierarchy of chiral nuclear interactions here. And one has to go to at least N2LO in order to include three N forces in this scheme. And the uh, low energy couplings here appearing here um, at the various uh, uh, graphs here, then they are fitted to um, nuclear nucleon scattering data and to um, nuclear structure data of a small, small nuclei. And with this theory, then a prior was constructed with the additional constraint that it meets the maximum, the, the, the minimum value here of the maximum mass a neutron star can attain. And this is this value of 1.9 solar masses, which is a safe lower limit on the maximum mass. And then a radius of the 1.4 kilo, kilometer neutron stars was then calculated and <clears throat> as a starting point. This is the prior. And the 1.4 uh, uh, solar mass uh, neutron star is a so-called canonical uh, neutron star. And if you look in this uh, catalog here of observed neutron stars, that in particular for those which are measured with high precision from the double neutron star binaries, there is certainly a concentration at 1.4 uh, solar masses. And, and then um, Bayesian inference was used to include other information. The upper limit of the maximum mass, nicer information from two stars, the um, tidal deformability, then information from the kilonova, the aftermath of this um, neutron star merger. Then also the second so far observed um, neutron star merger, 1904-25, where no electromagnetic counterpart was observed. And finally, the Hick results. And the result is then 12.01 plus minus 0.78 kilometers with a 95% meaning two sigma, um, two sigma error here of 0.78 kilometers. It's interesting that NISA as well, these radii measurements, as well as the uh, information from the laboratory, the Newton uh, uh, charged particle elliptic flow ratio point in the same direction they are very much consistent and push a little bit up here, nicer here, pushes this value up towards harder equations of state. And so does, so does the Hick result here, they um, point into the same, same direction. And um, now this is what the um, equation of state looks like. That is figure one uh, of this paper here. Um, neutron star matter, we see the contours at 68 and 95% credibility. And here is the prior. We see the strong effect of using chiral effective field theory up to 1.5 uh, um, saturation density. And then the extension here with the speed of sound extension then um, is, is shown here, uh, leads to a, a broader distribution in the prior which then is strongly constrained by astrophysical information. We have seen earlier that here, say at, say at density two and above, then astrophysics information provides strong constraints. 
and then using then the heavy iron result, the final distribution pressure versus density was obtained. And alternatively, you may go from a prior to using the heavy iron information going this way and, or going that way, because at the end we have the product um, of, all, of all these probabilities. The prior here is listed again, um, uses chiral effective field theory up to 1.5 saturation density, the speed of sound extension, and then additional, this lower limit of the maximum mass. Then Astro, I have already mentioned here, the various pieces of information. It's a complete, makes complete use of all the information we have, including then from heavy iron collisions here for pure neutron matter from the ACEOS experiment and for symmetric nuclear matter from FOP and AGS data. Now, um, let's go a little bit into details here and look at this um, table here from the extended data and supplementary tables of the paper. And it demonstrates the stability of uh, this process of the Bayesian inference because several um, decisions or choices have to be made. And for example, here, chiral effective field theory that it's used up to 1.5 saturation density. Now, um, the question here is what is the breakdown scale of chiral effective field theory if you go to higher densities, you, you go to higher momenta, and at some point then uh, the fitting of these uh, low energy couplings may not be good enough to uh, provide information for the high, high momentum behavior of the nuclear forces. Distribution of the prior, the extension, then the sensitivity curves uh, that one may use for the uh, heavy iron data. I have showed you the one that was obtained from um, QMD calculations. And then uh, the proton fraction, then what is used for the proton fraction in neutron star, which will then also determine the pressure of neutron star matter, which is not the same as pure neutron matter because of proton fractions of say five to 10% that we uh, <clears throat> can expect in neutron stars. And here in this table here um, shows what has been tested. Many of these choices have been tested by doing alternative analysis and there's a whole list of them. And instead of natural prior, there's a uniform prior was used in the difference is 70 meters in the radius of the 1.4 solar mass neutron stars. Here you go, instead of 12.01, you get 12.08. And if you go through this list, you see that um, basically the results are very stable, 12 plus minus, say up to maximum 200 meters here for the uh, radius that is obtained. With one exception, and that is this here. If EFT, Carl EFT is used only up to saturation density, then we have a larger radius of 12.56 instead of the 12.01. So that is the largest effect that is shown on this table. And we can now go back and uh, have a look have a look at the uh, prior here. I showed you here constraints up to 1.5. If this is used only up to 1.0, then we get this larger um, radius because the uh, equation of state may become more stiff in this region. A list again here uh, of the of the input to the to the prior here: stability, causality, a max, and um, uh, speed of sound here is related how the pressure increases with the density. So this describes here the um, the, uh, the, the slope of the of the uh, equation of state here of the pressure versus density relation. Now let's look what uh, we get from 
from Astro. And here is now Prior plus Astro. And if I flip forth and back, and you just look at this point here in this region here, you see that Astro wants the equation of state, the pressure to be higher than what we have in the prior. And um, let's see, something happened. So now, okay. Let's go back to the prior and let's see what the heavy iron collisions, uh, how they compare with the prior. And we see also here, if we add prior plus heavy iron collisions in brown, then we see that also there is, it, it, it increases um, the pressure here in this critical region here, the same tendency as Astro. And, um, same tendency as Astro. And we see that the high heavy iron data is plotted here are even would uh, <clears throat> point to an even larger pressure, but um, the statistical weight is not large enough to really influence then the result stronger than what we see by comparing here, by, by comparing here these, these distributions. So I flip here for you to see the difference. And, and then let's look at the final result now that is at the upper, upper limit of the prior here. The prior is here the dashed line at the upper limit of the prior. So this, um, as it seems to me, is somehow the open point. And this is a region that as um, we have seen, a region that can be reached with heavy iron data. And it clearly asks for more precise and better data and data sensitive to higher densities in order to come to an improved equation of state in this region that is so important also for uh, the, say, the final result we get for the uh, 1.4 solar mass radius. And this brings me now um, with a few more minutes. I like to, I like to show to you what we have in mind in the future, with the hope that this can, can um, be realized. A second experiment, a follow-up experiment of the ACOS experiment uh, that I have shown to you. And now the idea is instead of working at one energy, doing an excitation functions at lower and higher energies to reach a broader range of, of um, densities that can be addressed with these data. And um, the, the setup is very similar. So again, a target here, and then instead of land, Neuland, the new neutron detector presently being existing and being uh, built at the, at the GSI. And uh, Chimera, which I have shown to you, uh, wall, forward wall. And um, so the basic idea is also summarized here. The hope is to get sensitivity to higher density <clears throat> with the NP flow. Here I've already pointed out that if one is able to isolate protons from among the charged particles, then you get sensitivity to higher densities than with all charged particles. That's what we did in the existing, what we have in the existing data, and also to higher, higher bombarding energy, then we'll um, also uh, uh, test higher densities. Now with higher bombarding energy that is plotted here, the um, sensitivity of the signal of the elliptic uh, flow ratio then decreases with the increasing increasing bombarding energy the particular role for the squeeze out of uh, the mean field decreases slightly and so we hope to be able to compensate this with a uh, new instrumentation <clears throat> higher sensitivity to the signal with new instrumentation. And one of them is the Neuland detector. 
It's all plastic that allows for improved calorimetry and improved separation of uh, the various charged particles, protons, neutrons, tritons, and so on. And at present at HGSI, uh, there are 13 planes existing. Planes is a double plane of 10 centimeter thickness. You see here the various uh, plastic scintillators uh, of this now also larger. And um, uh, the hope is that uh, more planes will come, but already with the existing thickness of 1.3 meter, it will allow an improved measurement of uh, neutrons and charged particles. Details for this uh, of this detector are given in this paper of uh, Konstanze Boretsky and uh, the many co-workers, and she is actually shown here working on the detector. The other instrument is CRAB, the Krakow barrel. That is a very small detector, 43 centimeters total length, consisting of, um, of five rings of scintillation fibers, four by four millimeters squared in cross section, arranged in five rings. The target sits in the middle here at this point, and then you have four rings in forward direction and one ring in the backward direction. And uh, the hope is that this detector will give us an improved uh, azimuthal distribution of all the particles emitted in a large range of polar angles and allow us to get better resolution on the reaction plane orientation that is important to determine the azimuthal distributions of the neutrons and charged particles. Now this exists, has been tested in Krakow and we are looking forward to the test with heavy iron beam in March of next year. It will be very interesting how it behaves with heavy ions. And uh, the experiment, experimentalists among you know that uh, delta electrons are one of the, of the uh, uh, topics of the issues that have to be, that have to be handled. With this, I already come to my uh, summary and the outlook. Um, I have tried to show to you uh, the progress we make, we can make by combining terrestrial and astrophysical information. And I have pointed out to you the um, uncertainty we have in the density range, say from saturation up to 1.5 or two or twice saturation density. And <clears throat> we believe that Improvements are possible with new data, laboratory data that address this density region and um, in RCOS2, but there are also other projects that I had uh, no time to uh, speak about. There is uh, the SPIRIT collaboration at RIKEN, uh, HADES experiment, and uh, so in the future CPM experiment um, that the GSI may also be able to produce new information. We also expect new data from gravitational wave observatories. Interestingly, um, so far there was no second event of the kind and the quality of the 170817 is uh, known so far. The, we had the conference, the NUSIM conference in September and representatives of LIGO did not report on a new analysis of a new uh, neutron star merger. It's not excluded that uh, they have some candidates and are working on the analysis because the obser observation run 04 has started in May of this year. So it's already running since a few months. But uh, observation runs 01 to 03 only produce this one event, 170817. And Virgo and Kakra also joined Kakra in Japan. Uh, the <clears throat> interferometer uh, will also has also started in May, but uh, then um, it's not running continuously because of necessary upgrades. And then also, as promised in these papers, um, he um, improved uh, data are possible 
may come from improved NISA modeling here and also from continued timing observations uh, to uh, get a more precise masses of the heaviest uh, neutron stars observed so far. With this year, I would like to say thank all the people who have worked on all this and special thanks go to the uh, uh, members of the ACEOS collaboration. And I mentioned here the three spokesperson of ACEOS2, Paolo Rosotto, Arno Lefebvre, Yashi Lukasik, and the whole collaboration. Then the authors, the co-authors of, uh, of the Nature paper here, in particular here, the two <clears throat> who students who uh, mainly worked on these demanding calculations. They used to be PhD students, are now PhDs. And then the other people here, experienced people from many places, uh, 10 institutions, four countries. And also the theory, um, uh, theory help that is so important that um, have contributed enormously with their enormously with their calculations. Dan Cosma, in particular from uh, Bucharest, and then Yong Chawang, who is um, here on the among the attendants of this uh, seminar, and also Hermann Wolte. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. With these thanks, then I also recommend to you here that perhaps you go to the website of the conference here in September, NUSIM 23, and you find talks, talks at this website of the speakers of the conference from astrophysics and nuclear physics. And um, here I show the many uh, institutions that have uh, contributed to the ACOS experiment. I have mentioned that detectors came from various places, from uh, Krakow, from Catania, from St. Louis. And here are the uh, just the many institutions that have participated in this experiment. And for example, here is Hucho University. And uh, so, so we had great help from Yong Chawang and Ching Feng Li in the interpretation of this data. And with this, I would like to close now. And I'm happy to uh, discuss with you um, and uh, answer, answer your questions. Well, Richard, thank you. Thank you, Professor Trollman. So, does uh, anybody have a question? Uh, I, can, uh, I saw a raise hand. Kajasun, please, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, Professor Wolfgang. A very yeah. uh, nice uh, talk and inspiring talk. Uh, I have a general question concerning uh, using heavy ion collisions to uh, constrain the equation of state for a uh, neutron star. We know the temperature uh, in the neutron star is, is close to zero, but in heavy ion collisions, the temperature, the temperature of the of, uh, in the heavy ion collisions is usually above um, uh, like forty MeV, and uh, even can reach uh, one hundred MeV. So um, my question is that it seems that uh, uh, heavy ion collisions and uh, neutron stars have very uh, different temperatures. So how uh, could we use uh, Heavy ion data to constrain the uh, the structure of neutron star. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, uh, that's a question that uh, is uh, sometimes uh, posed, and it's clear that uh, yeah. Yeah. there are huge differences in the temperatures, and yeah. so uh, that's the. Uh, interesting thing about neutron stars that they uh, hopefully give us information about cold, uh, cold uh, and asymmetric nuclear matter. And one of the questions is, of course, what happens at the highest densities in the interior? So are we observing possibly having a phase transition there? And are there are there observable that can be used to perhaps pin down the properties of this of the matter in the in the interior and um, the temperatures 
are are high on on a on a temperature scale so MeV temperatures is not really cold, but it's cold uh, compared to heavy ion reactions. And here now, um, the point is, and your theory colleagues can certainly also answer you and uh, tell you how this is handled, how um, the temperature dependence of, um, say, of the mean field and uh, of the of the cross sections whether mm -hmm. they play a role. And um, I think um, basically the temperature is is um, handled by the fact that we have um, uh, nucleons that move. So the temperature is um, is uh, how to say is an expression of the fast motion of the nucleons as they collide, and also in the interior of uh, of, of of nuclei. And then just the experience tells us that the uh, that the transport models are capable of reproducing the experimental data to a high accuracy, and um, that the uh, temperature effects as such are um, automatically included by the fact that we have uh, fast moving, moving nucleons. Of course, if you go to detail, then questions come up um, in the interior, what is the effective mass that plays a role in the motion of the nucleons in the collision zone and so on. So there are details that can be discussed, but mm -hmm. basically temperature is handled by the uh, kinetic part of the, of the description. Okay, uh, okay, I see. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much for the uh, explanation. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So is there any other question? Hello. Hello, yes. Bob Gang. Yeah, there yeah. Is someone. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Yingxun. Ah, Yingxun, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I have a question about the, actually related to the Kaidia's question. You know, in our, in the transfer model, uh, the uh, momentum dependent of symmetry potential is also important. Of I course, think that yeah. will be, yeah, that will also influence the, for example, the equation of state at the, the, yeah. the different temperature. My, my question has, is, uh, yeah. yeah, my question is, can, can we uh, find some new uh, observer or data to, uh, to to better constrain this moment of dependent symmetry potential? Um, in the like future, in AI, understand, but I mean, okay, you, you are aware of what has been done in the TMEP project here, transport model evaluation project. So, so um, many of these details have been discussed and, uh, and, 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 and uh, conclusions have been drawn from what is observed and from the differences of the various models. So, so I'm, I'm perhaps not the person to uh, discuss uh, the, the details, but uh, I know that, uh, for example, the density and the momentum dependence of the cross sections is something that has been systematically studied. And uh, part of it is then say from a theoretical um, uh, <clears throat> considerations and part of it is just from comparing to a, a large variety of experimental data. And I think it's rather impressive how well experimental data have been reproduced with uh, transport model calculations. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, hi, welcome. I also have a question. So, yeah, uh, young uh, Yeah, so um, I wonder whether the um, you you said the up, update version for a is uh, AOS US experiment. AOS, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, it's already approved or it's um. Do you have some time schedule? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question. Um, let's go back to you to this uh, figure here. So um, it's approved with um, A minus. A means physics motivation and so on. All this is approved and gets an A. That's, um, that's uh, the, the, highest, the highest rating we, we can get. And the minus uh, says that it can only run 
when there is beam time available and when there is space available. And what okay. we see here is um, is uh, so-called KFC at the GSI. And okay. if you go there now, then you find here the installation of the R3B collaboration, a large, huge magnet, superconducting magnet, GLAD. And uh, land is not, Neuland is not here, but it's in a zero degree direction. So there's no space for this experiment. Mm -hmm. And the planning is now as fair is being constructed. At some point, R3B will move to a new cave. And uh, R3 Beef uh, is part of the New Star, uh, New Star collaboration, and the New Star experiments will profit from the super FRS uh, separator, a new fragment separator. And the, all the um, instruments now presently in KFC will move at some point to the new cave uh, behind the super FRS of the of the fair, fair, fair project. And um, then at that point, this experiment should run. Then the magnet mm -hmm. should move and Neuland stays, stays here, stays in the cave, will be moved to here. And at, at that point, then the experiment can run. And preparations are being done. And uh, next, next March, we hope to be able to test uh, a test crap. Crap is a very small instrument, so the magnet uh, it can be put behind the magnet or in front of the magnet. So there is space for this small instrument for um, a test with heavy iron beams, but the full experiment cannot run at this time. So it needs it needs the interval when, and this is agreed with RCB that first the magnet should be put to the new. Uh, to the new cave, to its new position. And then the, there's then time for running this experiment. So, um, I mean, things are changing um, at the G GSI from say month to month because uh, there are new constraints and new achievements mm -hmm. depending uh, how you look at it. And so one mm -hmm. has to just work on it to be ready at the right time. Okay. Okay, thank so you. So not tomorrow. It will not run tomorrow. It will not run <laughs> next year. So <laughs> okay, this is for Maybe sure. Two or three years. <laughs> yeah. So that's the hope. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So is there any other question? So here you can look at the. Uh -huh. uh, this year, I recommend them yeah, many interesting talks. We were very happy with this new sim conference that uh, now is uh, happening since uh, nearly nearly 15 years. And uh, now there are more and more astrophysicists coming. And um, we had representatives from various groups, gravitational physics, uh, LIGO, NISA, and so on. And you can, you can see their talks and latest results. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, that is that I I have put on the on the abstract here. This figure and um, figure somehow um, combining mic, um, microscopic and macroscopic collisions here. That's an event display of the FOPI detector. That's a microscopic collision to heavy nuclei, and you see the the curved particle trajectories in the magnetic field. And now this is um. Um, IQMD event display. And this here is a neutron star merger as modeled by Tim Dietrich, who is, uh, has got his PhD by modeling neutron star mergers. And he has contributed with this picture here on a star background. So somehow the idea is emphasizing combining heavy ion experiments and astrophysical observations. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, amazing to uh, mixture the biggest and the smallest things together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think what one should keep in mind, it's not, not a trivial result that the um, information we get from here and from here, that uh -huh. they agree so well. So that is really one of the, and that was also by the referees of this um, 
uh, uh, nature paper was emphasized that this is one that is one of the main uh, say main uh, results uh, of this study that there is such fantastic agreement uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that is um, somehow um, expresses how well how well we understand the nuclear interaction but as i showed to you there are still open questions and that's uh, some of the tasks we face in the next few years. So we have opportunities to, to contribute from the, also from the theory side. I mean, I very much hope, and there are some of you are part of the, of the TMEP project. So I'm looking forward to, to mm -hmm. also uh, emphasis on flow observables in the continuation of this project. Yeah, looking for more coming. <laughs> So, is there any other questions? Uh, yeah, if not, uh, let's uh, thanks uh, Professor Wolfgang Kriedman again, and uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, so it's time to close uh, this. Yeah, um, yeah let you. me also thank you for uh, attending and um, and also say goodbye to my colleagues and friends whom I know and whom I have met several times and um, also recently. And um, so hope to see you all at some other occasions very soon. So uh -huh. thank you for listening, yeah, for attending. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Okay, bye, bye, -bye. everybody. Bye.